Yo guys, going on? It's your boy Kingster70 back with another video. Before we get into this video, I just want to remind you all to the little kings and queens. And I hope you all are having a very, very blessed week. And then I'm back with probably my most controversial series on my channel. It is going to be another mock draft. Uh, this is where most people, you know, I get a lot of dislikes on these videos. But you know what? I appreciate that because a lot of you guys in the comments let me know where I went wrong. And you guys just helped me. Uh, formulate a better mock draft in the future but this time things are going to be different because we are not on i forgot the first website i was using actually but we are now on the pro football focus mock draft simulator and at the end of this draft pro football focus is going to give us a grade for each draft pick that we do uh, we are doing only the first round in this mock draft but it's going to be really interesting and uh we'll see you know Pro Football Focus, if you're going to make a debate, an argument with one of your pals about football, this is probably one of the first websites that you're going to go to for in-depth analytical uh, statistics to support your claim. So, you know what? I think if me, if I'm if I'm getting A's from Pro Football Focus, I think I did a pretty good job in this mock draft. But nonetheless, let me not waste any more of your time. Let's start this draft also. Uh, th this draft's going to look a lot different, these mock drafts, as time goes on, as trades happen when free agency comes and stuff like that so this is still a very raw mock draft but first overall uh there's really been no questions about who's going first overall in this draft for for numerous years um it's gonna be uh trevor lawrence going to the jacksonville jaguars some people might have been like yo you see how justin fields played against them uh no nah, it's it's still gonna be trevor lawrence going number one overall to the jaguars i'm pretty sure like there's, there's like, I, I get like these ads on YouTube. It's like Jacksonville Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence jersey. Like probably so many Jaguars fans are already buying that jersey. It's going to be a hot commodity once it becomes 100% reality. Uh, with the second overall pick, we have the New York Jets. This has probably been one of my more controversial picks. Uh, I've, I've went with Zach Wilson in the past. I went with Justin Fields in the past. I went with Panay Sewell in the past. Um, I do see them going Panay Sewell at this moment in time. I could very much see Deshaun Watson end up at the New York Jets. Why he would want to go to the Jets, um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if he goes to Jets, I'll be really happy for Jets fans. Uh, Deshaun Watson, a generational talent and definitely top 10 quarterback, no doubt in my mind, in this league. Uh, led the league in passing yards, I'm pretty sure, this past season. There we go, Panay Sewell, number 2 overall to the New York Jets. Him and Mackay Becton at the tackle spots are gonna be, you know, they're gonna be really, really good for years to come. With the third overall pick, now we have the Miami Dolphins. Uh, they need a tackle guard, uh, and um, I don't really see them going tackle or guard here in this scenario. Possibly if Panay Sewell drops, uh, if if the Jets do pick up a quarterback, I could potentially see uh, the Miami Dolphins draft a tackle in Panay Sewell. Or I could potentially see maybe the, the Bengals trade up. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really completely sure. But if this is how the order does pan out, I do see number three overall. Um, I think I think Devontae Smith. That's pretty interesting that uh, out of the three main receivers, uh, Pro Football Focus actually ranks Devontae Smith the worst. It's probably because, you know, his frame and they don't think he could get the job done at the next level. But you know what? He's He's been uh, proven doubters wrong. For the whole season now, and he goes number three overall to the Dolphins. Him and Tua Tunga Vailoa are gonna link back up, and the number four pick on the clock, the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, this has been a popular location for quarterbacks to go. Um, personally, if I really was the Falcons, I don't think I would go quarterback. I don't know. I would just stick with Matt Ryan for another year or two potentially. But I do think that Zach Wilson is, is potentially just too good to pass up on. We'll see as uh, the Falcons watch tape, um, as they do their combine. You know, they're going to have the combines at their own schools. It's not going to be an actual uh, combine as there has been in years past due to uh, the current pandemic. But uh, number four overall, I am going to go with Zach Wilson to the Falcons. Even though I just said if, if I was the Falcons, you know, if I was the owner, GM, all that, I would stick with Matt Ryan. But... Um, I do think they will go quarterback. Now, number five, um, the Bengals. I have seen people give them a quarter. I mean, not a quarterback. Give them a wide receiver. I don't know why they would go wide receiver in this scenario. You do have Jamar Chase. And, I mean, you do have Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins. And, I mean, you might be able to re-sign A.J. Green on a cheap contract, but I highly doubt he's going to return. I think he's going to want to go elsewhere and get more looks and more targets. Uh, but I also could see Kyle Pitts. <clears throat> Kyle Pitts would be a very interesting option. 
But I do see them going tackle. Ultimately, you want to be able to protect your man, um, Joe Burrow. So they're going to go Rashawn Slater, the top tackle on the board. Let me just make sure. Let me just keep scrolling down. There's Christian Darisaw. And there is no other tackle. There's Tevin Jenkins. But I do think they're going to go the highest rated tackle left on the board, which in this scenario is Rashawn Slater. Goes number five overall to the Bengals. Now, number six. What? Why would their top need be quarterback? Pro football focus. I was just hyping you up before the video, and you tell me the top need is quarterback. I know Carson Wentz, you know, he might not have that mental stability anymore to play quarterback. Uh, but you, he still, I think he's still capable of being a good quarterback. And, you know, I don't think Jalen Hurts did bad down the stretch. And that was as a rookie with limited snaps, no preseason, no training camp, you know. So I think I think you have two viable options at quarterback. Uh, linebacker is another big need. But I do think you guys go wide receiver. Now who would you go, Jamar Chase or Jalen Waddle? I'm going to give you guys Jamar Chase, the highest rated wide receiver. You got, you know, in years past, we, it's, it's like a broken record at this time. You passed up on who? Metcalf, Terry McLaurin. This past draft, you passed up on uh, Jefferson, T. Higgins. You know, just get yourself a number one wide receiver. Do your quarterback a favor, and you get getting Jamar Chase. Now with the seventh pick, this is really interesting because um, in recent uh, in recent days, the Detroit Lions have officially stated they will be moving on from Matt Stafford. I'm really happy for him, honestly, because I do think he is a very underrated quarterback in the game, and I, I'm really happy and excited to see where he ends up. I think if, uh, if they could do... Um, if Matt Stafford ends up with the Rams, that would be really, really good for him. I think they would uh, they would automatically become like, a contender for real because, I mean, Jared Goff is not that guy. He's just really not. But at uh, number seven overall, the Detroit Lions are hitting the reset button, and they're, uh, they're going to go with Justin Fields, man. It's either Justin Fields or Trey Lance. I really see them going with Justin Fields after that, those performances that he had in the college football playoffs. Uh, now number eight, uh, the Carolina Panthers need edge and linebacker. What do they need more, or do they go with the top available prospect? This also has been a, a place that people think that a quarterback is going to be taken. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, uh, Teddy Bridgewater, yeah, we know he's not a star. Or maybe he is. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. The Carolina Panthers situation, it's pretty confusing to me, to be honest. Uh, but I don't think they take Trey Lance. I don't think Trey Lance in this moment of time. Well, I mean, if I had to guess, I think Trey Lance might end up being the second best quarterback in this draft. Uh, but I, I don't think the Carolina Panthers do take quarterback. I think they're going to take uh, linebacker Michael Parsons out of Penn State. Uh, I mean, I've been hearing really, really good things about him. He didn't have a, a sensational, crazy, crazy, crazy season this year, but he did have a very solid year, and he has a pretty solid resume to his name. Now number nine overall, I think this is where another quarterback is taken in Trey Lance. Uh, the Broncos have come out and said that they looked to, or they're looking forward to bringing in a veteran to compete with Drew Locke for that starting quarterback role. Uh, why do that when you can get Trey Lance? I don't think Drew Locke is that guy moving forward in your team, and I don't think, I think the reports are like they might get Gardner Minshew, Gar, you know, Minshew Mania. It's funny and all, you know, but what do you lead the Jaguars to? One in the, he led him to the number one overall pick this year, you know what I'm saying? So I don't think they'll be going that route anytime soon. Now number 10 overall, I'm pretty sure I've given the Cowboys the same exact pick every single mock draft. But you know what's crazy is Patrick Chatine is actually uh, ranked lower in Pro Football Focus's eyes. Caleb Farley is the top corner. Uh, definitely not Jalen Waddle, not Kyle Pitts. Quiddy Pay, I mean, you got a lot of edge rushers. They haven't produced a whole lot in you know recent times. But uh, let's see, who do they go, who do they go, who do they go? Um... I think they go. I think they go Caleb Farley. I, I think I think Patrick Chetain is just better. I'm gonna give him Patrick Chetain as I have this whole time. Now number eleven, my favorite team, the Giants. Our biggest needs are guard and edge. We have Will Hernandez. Who else do we play? Shane Lemayhew and Kevin Zeitler. We might be releasing Kevin Zeitler to get more cap space under our belt. But I mean, if Jalen Waddle was here on the board, I think we 100% take Jalen Waddle. I have seen people say Kyle Pitts potentially because Kyle Pitts uh, has lined up outside as a receiver in his college career. So I mean, him and Evan Ingram, they're mismatch nightmares, you know. But I mean, I think Jalen Waddle, his potential is just through the roof. I would take Jalen Waddle, and I'd be really happy to see that, you know. But they also could have taken Quiddy Pay in that scenario. Quiddy Pay, we really, really, really pretty badly need an edge rusher. 
So that I think that all just comes down to if we were able to sign you know, an Allen Robinson, a Kenny a Kenny Galladay, or a Curtis Samuel in free agency. If we were able to do that, then I think we would be taking Quiddy Pay with the eleventh pick. But now number twelve on the clock, San Francisco 49ers. A popular landing spot for quarterbacks on the market. Potentially uh Matthew Stafford could go there, Deshaun Watson could go there. I really hope Deshaun Watson goes there. But yeah, QB is their biggest need. I don't think with the remaining quarterbacks on the board. How do you uh here we go, positions? Quarterback Mac Jones. I don't. I don't see him taking Mac Jones or Kyle Trask, or any of these other guys. Let's see. Sam Ellinger. Wow, 189. Yeah, they don't. They don't even go past 281. All right, number 12, the Niners. If they went edge again, that would be scary. But I do. Caleb Farley. Caleb Farley is that the pick? I, I I'm really leaning towards a Caleb Farley, and I think that's who I'm gonna take for them. Caleb Farley. Richard Sherman is a free agent. I think another one of their corners is a free agent as well. But number 13 on the clock now, the Los Angeles Chargers. I'm going to give them Quiddy Pay. I don't think they re-signed Melvin Ingram, as I've been saying for a while now throughout these mock drafts. Quiddy Pay will be a really, really good uh, addition to that team. Him and Joey Joey Bosa, right? I remember I always confused. Joey Bosa and Quiddy Pay will be really dominant on that defensive line. Here we are, the Minnesota Vikings with the 14th pick in this year's draft. Their top needs are guard, a defensive interior, and a edge rusher. We got, oh, well, I was at the position. Hold up, hold up. We got Edge right here, Gregory Rousseau. We got Christian Barmore at 15 out of Alabama. You see what I'm saying? Like, a lot of their needs are right at the top of the board, but I don't necessarily know who would be going where. But if I did have to guess, I think Gregory Rousseau, he he looks like he might be a hit-or-miss prospect in this draft. I've, I've, I've watched a couple of videos of people doing in-depth uh, video and analysis on these players. But I'm going to give Gregory Rousseau to the Vikings. Now number 15 on the clock. We got the New England Patriots. And uh, the top needs quarterback, wide receiver, tight end. I think that is all very, very accurate. They're just looking really bad all around on the offensive side of the football. But get yourself a mismatch nightmare. Get yourself a nice security blanket for whoever your quarterback is going to be. And get yourself Kyle Pitts, tight end out of Florida. I'm really excited to see what he does in the NFL. There's been so much praise from him throughout college. And um, I'm just excited to see him. Number 16 now, we got the Arizona Cardinals. Wide receiver, tight end, and interior defensive lineman. Who do who do, who we see them taking? Wide receiver, they have Christian Kirk, Andy Isabella, D-Hop, Larry Fitz. Larry Fitz, I don't think he's retired yet. So would they take wide receiver? I think if Kyle Pitts was there, they would have taken Kyle Pitts with this pick. But I don't necessarily see them taking... Um, I don't necessarily see them taking a wide receiver. If I had to be honest, what do the Cardinals need? I know their corners are all free agents like Kirkpatrick, Patrick Peterson. I think the only one that isn't a free agent is uh, Byron Murphy. So I could very much see them going cornerback. And I'm going to give him J.C. Horn. This might be my first big miss in uh, in this draft class. I might get a bad grade for this pick. But I don't necessarily think, think it's that bad. J.C. Horn's a very good corner out of South Carolina. Now number 17, the Oakland, oh my gosh, not the Oakland, the Los Angeles, the, what am I saying right now? The Las Vegas Raiders is what I'm, I've been meaning to try to say. Uh, they need the uh, interior defense lineman and edge. And where is the guy, where's my man out of Texas? Where's the edge out of Texas? Where's he at? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Am I bugging? Is he not out of Texas? Joseph Asai is the 56th ranked prospect? What? That can't be right. Really? I was okay. I mean, maybe I'm really wrong about that, guys. But I don't. I didn't. I didn't think he was. I thought he was. I thought he was ranked higher. Or he was definitely ranked higher, much higher on the other website that I was using. But uh, in that case, let's give him Jason Owa out of Penn State University. Now we got the Dolphins. So Dolphins first pick, they took Devontae Smith wide receiver. Now they got another first round pick, 18th overall to be exact. And that tackle, Christian Darisol, looks really, really tempting for them to take. They also need guard. I'm pretty sure they do need a linebacker as well. But let's give him uh, give him guard, right? Or tackle. Let's give him tackle. Let's give him Christian Darisol. I have seen mock drafts where the Bengals actually take Christian Darisol instead of uh, Slater. But number 19, the Washington football team. You need quarterback, wide receiver, tackle. I think I really do think they take Mac Jones in this position. Mac Jones, 
Is that the right pick? I'm not all that sure. Are they going to win one of the sweepstakes and get uh, a QB like Matthew Stafford or like Deshaun Watson? I'm not really sure. I don't really see them being front runner runners in either of those quarterback situations. Uh, but yeah, Mac Jones, I'm not really sure what to expect from him in the, in the NFL. But I'm sure, you know, he's had doubt his whole life. You know, you guys see all those pictures going around on the internet. Well, he's got like a, you know, like a beer belly. He's not like ripped or anything or jacked. But he still gets the job done, you know what I'm saying? But number 20 overall on the clock, the Chicago Bears. Another team that is in very desperate need of a quarterback. And what will they do? Uh, quarterback tackle guard. What can I see them going? I, I wouldn't be surprised to see wide receiver, maybe. Will wide receiver be a bad call for the Bears? Allen Robinson's free agent. Uh, they had Darnell Mooney. Uh, who's there? The receivers? Am I missing someone? Like they got Cole Komet at tight end. Am I like missing someone? Maybe they're gonna pay a quarterback big bucks. I I don't know. I really. If I had to guess, I don't think Allen Robinson is gonna sign back. That's just my opinion, though. Obviously, it could be wrong. But in that scenario, I think they take Rashad Bateman at twenty. Uh, 21, another, yet another team. There's three teams in a row that all need quarterbacks. The Colts, Phil Rivers, did indeed retire. So they got Jacob Eason and Jacoby Brissett is a free agent. But I think they should just re-sign Jacoby Brissett. I don't think he's, he's bad at all if you're can't if you unable to trade for a quarterback. But I think Matthew Stafford's like number two preferred destination was the Colts. I think it was the Niners, then the Colts. So that will be really interesting to see. But uh, let's have him take edge here in this scenario and take Aziz. Alujari out of Georgia. And now I'm getting really... I don't think uh, Jeremiah Osu Karamo is going to stay this long. Uh, but there's not... Who, what's another team that needs a linebacker? We got the the Browns. Who else? <clears throat> the Packers and the Chiefs. But here we are with the Titans. Guard and edge. <clears throat> who do I see them taking? Who do I see the Titans taking? Uh, a guard? Who's the top ranked guard in this class? Uh, into your offensive lineman, Wyatt Davis is the top ranked, 32nd ranked. Uh, let's give you the best rated guard. I'm pretty sure he's the first guard drafted in this year. And uh, number 23, the Jets select yet again in the first round. They still need quarterback. Who did I get him taken? Took Penny Swole. So you need QB, wide receiver, edge, and corner. And the Jets just need everything, don't they, man? I think I took, I gave him the G. Harris, like my last mock draft, and one Jets fan got really. I'm really upset that I gave them that pick, you know. So, let's have them taking... Oh, man. What can I see them taking? Wide receiver wouldn't be a bad shout. And Kadarius Tony just keeps soaring up people's uh, big boards. So, I'm going to give him Kadarius Tony, man. Just just get that offense better. You got an offensive lineman. You got a real potential number one wide receiver weapon. Uh, you also drafted Denzel Mims last year. Also, oh, that was a bad pick, wasn't it? You also have Jay Crowder or Jameson Crowder. Maybe they shouldn't have taken wide receiver. All right, I know there's going to be a lot of controversy surrounding that pick, but I do think Tony's going to be like a bona fide number one receiver. Him, Crowder, Mims, I think that trio is going to be really good. And uh, you just need to give uh, your quarterback as, mu as many weapons as possible, you know? Uh, number 24, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Big Ben did say he wants to come back and play another year. He's willing to shave off some money off his contract in order to bring in surrounding talent and pieces around him. So you need QB, guard, and safety. Uh, at 24, I have the Steelers taking Elijah Barry Tucker. I know it says he's listed at tackle, but he's capable of playing tackle and guard. He did so in college at USC. So that should be able to, to sure up the offensive line even further for the Pittsburgh Steelers now. With the second pick in the first round yet again. So there's three teams with two picks in the first round. The Jags, Dolphins, and Jets. And that's funny. They all go one, two, three in real life in the in the first round. But yeah, here we go. 25. They need QB. Address that. Edge, cornerback, and safety. Is there any edges here that are just really, really good? I can, see, I can honestly see them going edge. They need edge. Carlos Basham? Maybe tackle. Maybe tackle for him. Samuel Cosby, potentially, potentially. But let's have him taking an edge. Let's have him taking Car Carlos Basham Jr. out of Wake Forest. 
26 overall. The Cleveland Browns are going to take this year's uh, award winner in college football for best linebacker, Jeremiah Osu Caramel. Pretty, uh, pretty, it's a pretty easy pick, you know, for the for the Browns. Uh, the 27th pick overall, we have the Baltimore Ravens. They definitely need wide receiver, and that's why I already got I got to I got to pick the wide receiver category. Rondell Moore is the highest rated wide receiver up until this point, but Zaman Ross St. Brown, Terrence Marshall. I'm pretty surprised that he's ranked that low. Uh, on the previous website I was using, he was ranked I think higher than Rondell Moore. If I'm not mistaken, but let's give him the top rated uh, top rated wide receiver, excuse me, by Pro Football Focus, Rondell Moore drafting. There we go. Now 28th pick, we have the Saints, who another team who might be in the quarterback market. There's just so many teams out here that really, really desperately need quarterbacks. I mean, with the Saints. Would they take Kyle Trask, or would they maybe wait to see if Taysom Hill could develop into a an efficient passer? I mean, I I truly have no idea. I have no idea. Like the Saints is definitely will be a nice uh, destination for players to want to go to, uh, but like I, I had a lot of other teams pass up on quarterback, you know, like the the Bears, but the Bears is still have Trubisky, you know, and Foles. I'm pretty sure under contract. Uh, the, the, the Colts, I, I really could see them bringing back Jacoby Brissett. Very familiar with the offense and stuff like that. Uh, so I actually, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give the Saints Kyle Trask. I'm not sure how New Orleans fans will feel about that. That is just, a, it, I would give him Kyle Trask, assuming that Drew Brees is gonna retire. Obviously, if Drew Brees doesn't retire, there, there's no need to draft a quarterback in the first round, unless they're like the Green Bay Packers, who, you know, they just decide to draft a quarterback when you have Aaron Rodgers on your team. But uh, the top needs, wide receiver, I, I don't even care. Actually, interior defensive lineman, Christian Barmore, might be a more appealing pick. And I think that's what I'm going to go with, man. I'm just going to go straight ahead. Now, 30th, the Bills tackle. And, yo, I just got so scared because my door just opened. I thought it was like a ghost. But it, it was just my dog. And I said, what's up? I said, what's up? I said, what's up to the fam? Ugh. She just turned. She just turned two yesterday. Her name's Daisy. You know what I'm saying? I say what's up. She got. She got a little fit on right now. She could put her barriers on. And there. There. She's a Bears fan. You can't even see it. But yeah. All right. Well, yeah. She just scared me pretty badly. I thought I had a ghost in my house for a second. But all right. Thirtieth overall. Where was I at? Thirtieth overall. The Bills tackle. Hundred percent. Tevin Jenkins. At Oklahoma State University. Now, 31st overall, the Bucks. I don't know why QB is your biggest need. I don't think Tom Brady is retiring uh, after this season. Uh, the interior defensive lineman and edge. Uh, I could see him going safety, pair up, or corner. I'm going to give him corner. I'm going to give him Asante Samuel Jr. And the last pick of the first round is the Kansas City Chiefs. And who they got? Let's see. They need a linebacker, guard, and edge. Bang, Nick Bolton, and that is going to be my whole first round done. Wait, what happened? I only wanted to do the first round. Give me a grade. Nah, wait. Wait, no, I don't want to do the second round. Oh, my gosh, I probably, I probably didn't specify how many rounds I wanted to do. No. All right, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally, I'm going to go back. And give every single team the the exact player that I gave them, and we're gonna get my grades. So I'll be right back. Okay, I went back and gave every single team their pick that I just had in the past. I'm pretty sure I got every single pick right. I think I might have messed up one or two, but all right. Let's see what Pro Football Focus gave me the grade: Trevor Lawrence A plus, Penace will B plus, Devontae Smith B, Zach Wilson A plus, or Sean Slater D. I don't. I, I definitely see the Bengals taking an offensive lineman. I don't think Bengal fans would uh, disagree with me. Jamar Chase A, Justin Fields A plus, Micah Parsons B, uh, Trey Lance A plus. All right, all right. So you know you Broncos fans that you want Drew Locke. Probable focus is saying Trey Lance will be A plus. Patrick Sertain C plus, Jalen Waddle A. Wow, I did pretty bad. Caleb Farley C plus, Quiddy Pay C, Gregory Rousseau C plus. Kyle Pitts, A minus. JC Horn and Jason Oway, C minuses. Darisol, A minus. Mac Jones, A plus. Uh, Bateman, B minus. Aziz, B. Y Davis, C minus. Kadarius Tony, yeah, this was probably, this was probably my worst pick. Yeah, I, I feel like I instantly regretted giving them this player. He got a D plus. 
Vera Tucker B minus, Tevin Jenkins B, uh, Oosu A, Randall Moore A plus, Kyle Trask, which I was pretty uh, contemplating about. I didn't know if it was right or wrong. They gave me A plus, uh, Barmore B plus, Asante uh, B plus, Nick Bolton B plus, and Carlos Basham Jr. B plus. My overall draft grade was an A minus. So you guys know. You can roast me all you want in the comments, but that's a 3.7 out of 4 GPA. You know what I'm saying? I'll take the A- minus every single day of the week. And if you guys, well, just comment down below. You guys already know the vibe. Just comment down below everything you disagree with me on. You know me. I like to, we, we can debate, I guess. Not debate, but, you know, we can, we can discuss opinions and ideology uh, back and forth. If you guys did just overall enjoy this mock draft, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. This has been your boy, King Show 7 I'm out. Peace.